Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning in the name of Lord, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord. We just want to thank you, Father God, for all that you have done and for what you will do, Father God. We thank you, Lord, Father God, that it was you who woke us up this morning, Father God, and it's you, Father God, who's had your hand upon our lives, Father God. Lord, you said you even knew us before we were in our mother's womb. So, Father God, we thank you for every step that we take, Lord, Father God, that we know, Father God, that you were in the midst, and we thank you for that, Lord, Father. And today, Father God, we just want to praise you, Lord. We want to praise you. We want to get out of ourselves, Lord. We want to create a place for you, Father God, in here for your power to move, Father God. For your power to move, Father. Because we do want to see signs and wonders and miracles. We want to see miracles take place in here, Father God. We want to see your hand move in here, Father God. And for this, Lord, we have to create a place. We have to get out of ourselves, Lord God. And I focus on us, but focus on you. Keep our focus on you. Open our mouths. Clap our hands. Stomp our feet, God. Give you the praise. Give you the glory. Give you the honor. Because it's you who are worthy. Not us, oh God, but it's you. You are the one who made us who we are, Father God. It is you, Father God, who took us out of darkness into your marvelous light. It is you, Father God, who picked us up and turned us around when we were out there, Father God, in the world, not knowing what we were doing or where we were going. It was you, Father God. And we want to praise you for that today, God. We want to thank you for Father God, and bless your name today with praise of our lips and our hands and our feet. And Father God, we want to thank you for this body, Lord Father. We want to thank you for Pastor Mark and Sister Jackie. And Lord, we ask today, Lord Father God, that you would just touch Pastor Mark, Lord Father God. From the top of his head to the sole of his feet, Father God, we ask that you would pour into him today, Lord. Pour into him today, Father God, and use the man of God, Father God. Use him, Father God, to give us a message, Father God, that will penetrate our hearts, Lord God, that will change us, oh God, that we will not be the same when we leave here as we were when we came in. And Father God, even though we look around and we don't see too many people here with our natural eyes, but God, you made a promise and you said that you would send them men from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west. So God, we want you to do that today. And Lord, Father God, we are believing for a miracle in your Father God, that we will see this place filled, Father God. Filled, oh God. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that we know that we can stand on your word because your word said it will not return to you void, that it would accomplish what you set it out to do, Father God. And greater is you that's in us, Lord, than he that is in the world. So, Father God, we want to thank you today, Father God. And we're going to go in and usher your presence in here, Father God. As the praise team, Father God, usher in, Father God. We, Father God, as members of this body, Lord, Father God, will usher in the praise, oh God. And, Lord, we want to lift you up today, Father, because you said that when you be lifted up, you would draw all men unto you. So, Father God, this day, this day, we want to praise you, Lord, like we have lost our minds, oh God. We want to get out of ourselves and give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? I'm blessed. Blessed? Favored. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we just had church in the side room. <laughs> so hopefully we can bring it out here and give it to you. Amen. 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 Yes. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, I had this thought in my mind that these guys, because I don't see many guys out here today, okay? So where are you? Are you sitting at home watching football? If you can sit on a couch for four hours in the same place, you can come to church and sit in the same place for two or three hours. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I challenge you today, you guys out there watching football. Yes. Come on in here and get the word of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. power and your authority move in this place today mighty God hallelujah we give you right away in this place mighty God we thank you Lord Father God for everything in our lives the good and the bad Lord Father God because we have to go through it to get
get where you want us to go. your neighbor. Tell them how much you love them. Great big hug around the neck. Tell them you're praying for them.
That's the reason why we're here. <laughs> but, you know, the, the Lord can use whoever he wants. Yes. Amen. At any yes. time that he wants. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother, I had a dream about you last night. You Hi. were in an auditorium, and you were singing to thousands and thousands of people. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I just wanted yes. to let you know that before I forgot. <laughs> Oh, 
Glory to God. Because we know Glory. that there's a God. We know that there's a God in heaven. Yes. And he's on your side. Yes. Hallelujah.
show. Angels cry, holy, holy. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy. Getting ready to feel the power of the great I am. Great. And mighty. Oh, so mighty is He. Hallelujah. Great and you or forsake never, you he's never. always been by your side oh, hallelujah yes oh Lord. have your way even God. in those moments where you felt alone Ooh. and you felt like god i can't go through this he was right by your side yes he was yes he was Amen. Amen. yes God. where would you be without him being by your side in that moment that you mm -hmm. needed him nowhere <laughs> amen <laughs> inhale <laughs> just think about how much worse it could have been yes Lord. amen 
But God is sitting by your side. Stop the devourer. He stopped Satan. Who knows what the plan was for your life? Who knows if Satan was out to get you, out to kill you? Yeah. We thank you, Lord. Because without you, Lord, where would we be? Just listen to the words in these songs and let them penetrate your heart today, church. Yellow. Hallelujah. Yellow. What can we say to describe just a glimpse a of your glory?
life is not my own. I offer up a song of praise to bring you pleasure, Lord. I see the giver, not the
they saw it with their own eyes and they still didn't believe Jesus must have thought my God my God how many times do I have to show these people the power that you have and they still haven't believed they were lost in the desert for 40 years 40 years and I looked it up and it's like a nine-hour drive 40 years because they didn't believe because of who you are Lord you get all the glory amen if you want to lift your hands let's worship him today church hallelujah give all that you got to him submit fully to him today he is the king of kings and lord of lords and he wants you he picked you what a privilege what a privilege that is he picked you out of the crowd hallelujah oh mighty God thank you Jesus go ahead Beverly You glory, so much glory, because of who you are, I give you praise, so much praise, because of who you are. I worship you, Lord, because of who, of who you are. Come on, come on. Jehovah needs, Jehovah needs. 
everybody down Glory to the front to God. Come on down. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Listen Lord. to the words in this song. Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. Oh, the Lord is here. He is here. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Beverly, that was beautiful. Thank you. Thank Hallelujah. You. Oh, let's worship the Lord, church. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come on, if you're able, come down to the altar. Come down to the altar. Leave it at the altar. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord.
you show us, Lord. Show it to us, God. Hallelujah. Show me your glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Show me your glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior. Yes, Lord. Everybody grab hands up here in a circle. We're going to pray for a few minutes. <coughs> Everyone in the room, please, come to the front. Is this mic on? <coughs> Thank you, Lord. <coughs> How do you like that fan, brother? You like that fan? <laughs> Leave it on for me then. <coughs> the silk don't breathe. <coughs> Come on, right down this way, guys. <coughs> Stretch on out there. There you go. <coughs> Hop right in here, brother. We'll wait on the rest of the people. Squeeze right in. <coughs> now, we've been praying for revival. Now, just everybody with your eyes closed. Now, you're going to pray that revival hits you first. <coughs> okay? Pray however you want. Monotone. Pray in the spirit. English, however you want to pray, start right now. Ooh. Glory. Whoo, Jesus. Whoo, mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mm. Whoo. God. Mighty God. <clears throat> Mighty God. <sighs> Mighty God. <clears throat> Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus. God. Mm, mighty God.
glory, honor, and praises. God, <clears throat> Jesus, <clears throat> Jesus, mm. Mighty God. <coughs> Jesus. Mmm, la 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 ma soto ramaki. E la ma cora maki anda la bassa la la ma sa. Mighty God.
Mm. Mighty God, <coughs> mighty God. Whoo, Jesus. Mm. <coughs> Jesus. I want to take you in. I want to take you in. You're not really. You're not really the man.
One more minute.
power. <coughs> you guys can be seated. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to your chair, Jackie. <coughs> Mikey, <laughs> I like that beard, man. <coughs> Mine used to be dark like that. Yeah. <laughs> then old age hit me. <coughs> huh? <coughs> you gonna enjoy it while it lasts? How old are you? <coughs> oh, it'll probably hit you when you're about 30. What's that? <laughs> Whose water is this? Is this yours? <clears throat> Drink it down, brother. Probably tastes good. Hmm? Uh, 1 Kings 18. <clears throat> Four. Go until I stop you. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land, unto all fountains of water, and unto all brooks, 
peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive that we lose not all the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by himself and Obadiah went another way by himself. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him. And he knew him and fell on his face and said, Art thou that my lord Elijah? And he answered him, I am. Go tell thy lord, behold, Elijah is here. And he said, What have I sinned that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when they said he is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. And now thou sayest, Go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee, whether I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. Was it not told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave, and fed them with bread and water? And now thou sayest, Go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. 19. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal four hundred and fifty, and the prophets of the groves four hundred, which eat at Jezebel's table. Uh, two more scriptures. <coughs> Three more, excuse me. Uh, 1 Kings 19 and 1. 19 and 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. 2.21. 2.21. Get your Bibles, Yankee. And she said, Let Abishag the Shumanite be given to Adonijah thy brother to wife. And then 525. 525. And Hiram, king of Tyre, sent his servants unto Solomon, for he had heard that they had anointed him king in the room of his father, for Hiram was ever a lover of David. If you, if you read on Jezebel, I was going to pre preach the on repentance, but the Lord changed it. <clears throat> if you do any study on Jeze Jezebel, the Bible says she was a queen, wife of Abhab which was the king of Israel. We're not dealing with her now, but we're definitely still dealing with her spirit. <clears throat> Have you turned on, has anybody had the news on in the last year? <clears throat> yeah? Have you ever heard those babies in Hollywood, the women cry? <clears throat> Have you? Oh, yeah. Now, the generation I came in, came up in, the women weren't wearing men's pants the way they do. I don't mean that literally. 
it was different. It was just starting to change. Now it's the women show this um, manly fakeness about them. That we can do everything. We don't even need men. You ever heard that? Sure you have. But then they turn around and act like little babies. Can't handle nothing. <clears throat> so, I don't know if the Lord has spoke to you about this, but he's, as we sit here, I just want you to listen to me. But this spirit is rampant all over the country. It can fall on a man or a woman. Spirit of Jezebel. I want you to listen to me very closely. She just read that to you. She has false doctrines. Doctrines that are not right. She can be a man or a woman. The Bible says she's sexually loose. She ordered the killing of the prophets in 1 Kings chapter 18 verses 4 and verse 13. You read that. Can you imagine that? Prophets being killed by Jezebel. The Bible says she has a seducing spirit and she's very cunning. Very seducive. If you ever felt that goop, <clears throat> that goop that that spirit carries, Jackie being witness with me, it's like uh, we went and prayed for a lady. That was the first experience we ever had with it. It's like goop. It's real. It gets on, can get on you and you've got to fight to get it off. It's like uh, tar, but you can't see it. And that spirit carries that garbage with it wherever it goes. And it's all over the country. So she's seducing, she's cunning, she's uh, sedic, sedic, sedictive. Say that for me, yeah? Thank you, brother. She removed the prophet's altars. She was, Elijah was her number one enemy. Jezebel would not repent. She never repented unless she could repent, not really repent, to get something that she was wanting. The Bible says in 2 Kings 9, 29-37, she pursued Elijah. And you remember Elijah, he was a powerful man. Look over at your neighbor and say, he was a powerful man. Say it a little bit louder. Say, he was a powerful man. Okay. Here's what she attacks. And she's all over right now. She's all over the news. She's everywhere. Now right now she's attacking the churches. And it's going to get worse. It's not going to get any better. Because we've allowed. Matter of fact, you read in the Old Testament. It talks about when God's hand is lifting off something. The women and the children are in charge. Think about that for a minute. The women and the children. Children run this nation. Have you seen that commercial about with that little kid with his dad with the pizza? Yeah. <laughs> I turn it every time I see it. Makes just oh oh makes me mad. Dad, did you get my pizza with uh, pepperonis on it? With uh, blah blah blah. He runs this list off, lift off, list off, and the dad's got number one dad, and then he says, "No, I didn't get all that." The kid reaches up to his shirt and rips off the number one dad and throws it away. So we have kids now running the nation, and they do run it. Go, go to any school and you'll see they run it. Amen. Doesn't matter where you're at, Pontiac, Waterford, doesn't matter where you go. The kids are running the schools. Not my school, Pastor Mark. Well, if you're training your kids at home, you're, maybe you're right. <laughs> so she's everywhere. She does not like prophetic ministries. Hates them because it can reveal her. She can de destroy friendships. She can even commit suicide. Now that's spirits in the church and you think about this for a minute. I have never seen or heard so many suicides going on with young people. Amen. It's everywhere. It's rampant. And it's not just in the world. It's in the church. Amen. See that spirit can take in, take in control of uh, churches, the news media, uh, women and all the young people are looking at Hollywood for their answer and they're using those women. And those women are nothing but sleaze bags. That's all they are. That's all you can say about them. What else can you say? 
One of the Hollywood people, she's in this movie I've seen not too long ago. She had to go see a psychiatrist because she couldn't understand why her husband was the man of the, of the household and she couldn't be. So she had to go see a psychiatrist. I have no idea why. But men don't, over, don't run on that and go, yeah, we have to be the man and you can carry that way too far. That spirit never admits that it's wrong. Never. Ever does it admit it's wrong. It's stubborn. It brings discord. Discord. Say discord. That spirit can be on someone they don't even know it. Because they don't always show up in goop. Not always. It walks around with a prideful spirit. And it's my way or no way or I take my baseball bat and leave. After it's done its destruction. It's independent. It takes credit for everything. It takes credit for everything. But the prophetic ministry threatens it. It's a liar. And that spirit volunteers for everything. Look at your neighbor and say, that spirit volunteers for everything. Somebody lift your hands up for a minute. I want you to pray with me just for a second, you guys, because we're never going to stop that spirit in the world. You're never going to stop it, that spirit. It's rampant. We've accepted it. We've accepted it. And it's just, uh, it's everywhere. It's all over the news. It's everywhere. But we can definitely defend it if you catch it fast enough in the churches. Lift your hands up. Now, the other day I was watching this guy. He's around town here somewhere. I'm not sure where he's at. But this prophetic ministry is starting to come on him. And he's starting to walk in the prophetic ministry. And I'm watching this guy. And he's got these women around him. And I'm watching him. I immediately started praying for him because I could see it. So, you guys just pray for this. I don't even know his name. Just pray for him for a moment. Everybody in the church, just pray for him. You don't have to know his name. Just pray we cover him in the blood of Jesus, that he gets to come forth in his prophetic ministry, and that the call of God be fulfilled in his life. No, no matter what the name is. Remember, not my, by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. We can send, we can send the spirit or the voice of the spirit to defeat that enemy before he even gets a foothold. Whatever gets a foothold. <clears throat> Woo, mighty God. <clears throat> Father God, again, you said, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, saith the Lord. <clears throat> mighty God, we know, Lord, Father God, that that spirit's been sent out against the church. And what the enemy sends out, Lord Father, we can definitely defeat it in the body of Christ. We can take it by the throat and cast it out before it even gets there on this man. Because that's the ministry it wants to take down. In Jesus' mighty name, Father God, we give you the praise and all the glory, Lord Father God. I said we give him the praise and all the glory, mighty God. Woo! Mighty God. Let's pray for a minute, you guys. I can't even go on here for a minute. Everybody stand up. Just lift your hands. I'm praying the Holy Ghost for a minute. Everybody, just pray for a second. I don't know what hit me on this, but something touched me about this man. <clears throat> just pray for a minute, guys. Just for a second. Just pray for a minute. Just keep covering him for a second. I don't even, care. I don't even know the man's name. But I know that God's raising up the prophetic ministry in this city. And not just in this city, but all over. I know God is raising up the prophetic ministry. I know He's raising up the healing ministry. I know that God Almighty is raising up the body of Christ. Though no one can go with me, still I will follow, mighty God. I know He is. I can, I can sense His presence in this area. Glory to God. And it's going to happen. 
It's going to take place. <laughs> Ooh, mighty God. Mighty God. There's going to be a revival in this whole area. And nothing's going to stop it. Nothing's going to stop it. The hand of God is going to move. I'm telling you guys, it's preordained. It's already called. It's preordained. God's moving on it right now. God's moving on it right now. Woo! Just keep praying just for a minute. Keep praying just for a minute. Keep covering him just for a second. It don't matter who it comes through. I said it don't matter who it comes through. I said it don't matter who it comes through as long as it comes. Yes. <laughs> 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 Ooh, mighty God. Mighty God. <laughs> Mighty God. <laughs> Mighty God. Father, I can sense this right now. I know the church has went through a great disciplining time, Lord Father God. And I know you've chastised your church, Lord Father God. We're getting ready for your coming, Lord Father God. But we got a work to do before you come, Lord Father. Before you show up, Lord Father God. I believe the prophetic hand of the prophetic ministry is going to drop on people that are ready and they have a heart to receive it. I believe you're going to do that, Father God. I believe, Lord Father, just like he locked those 50 prophets up in the cave where she could not get to them. I believe there's 50 of them that will not be gotten to, Lord God. And you will move in this last hour. Not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, saith the Lord. I believe it, Father. Lift your hands up for it. Ask God, say, God, make me one. Live a louder. Say, make me one, mighty God. One that goes out. One that repairs the breach. One that brings your word, mighty God. One that is anointed by you, Lord Father God. Woo! Woo, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, mighty God. Jesus, put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder and pray over them. Pray over them they don't be defeated. Pray over them just for a minute. See, when you're different, when you're different like the church is, there's going to be people rise up against you and not like you because you are different. But if you have a word for them, and it's straight from God, it can turn away wrath. It can turn away the enemy. All through scripture it did it. <clears throat> Woo, mighty God. Woo, keep praying for a minute that they don't be defeated. God's calling this last hour. God's calling, it doesn't matter who it is. He, he's calling young, he's calling old, he's calling who will ever answer the call. <clears throat> who will ever answer the call. <clears throat> who will ever answer the call, he's calling us. Mighty God. Mighty God. <clears throat> Thank you. You can be. <clears throat> yes, you have.
please stand and lift your hands up for a minute. Jeremiah 31, 18. Turn it there. Put it in the NIV, brother. The NIV. We're getting ready to prophesy. Everybody grab hands. Everybody grab hands. You got your hands? You got your hands? Jackie, as you read this, I'm, we're going to prophesy over this whole state of Michigan that any pastor that's been brought down by that horrible spirit will be restored. That's not the verse, brother. Jeremiah 31, 18. Get there quick. <coughs> read it, Jackie. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus. Thou hast chastised me, and I was chastised. As a bullock unaccustomed to the yoke, turn thou me, and I shall be turned, for thou art the Lord my God. In other scriptures and other verses, this says, Restore me, Father God, after I've been chastised, Father God. Restore me. I want you to lift your hands up and say, Every minister that has been taken down by that spirit, will be restored in the name of Jesus. Every minister, every pastor, every song leader, everyone with the anointing will be restored. Hallelujah. Woo! Somebody praise him for a minute, man. Mighty God, mighty God, restore them, Father God. They've received your discipline, now restore them, Lord, Father God. Restore them, Lord, Father God. Every one, Lord, Father God. Every single one, restore them, Father God. Somebody give God praise for a minute. Somebody give God praise for a minute. Somebody give God praise for a minute. God. They're coming. It's coming to pass. It's coming to pass. I said it's coming to pass. I said it's coming to pass. God's raising up ministers right now uh, from the north, the east, the south, and the west uh, that will not adhere uh, to what is wrong, uh, but they will speak the word of the living God. Uh, thus says the Lord, uh, and they will stand by, thus says the Lord. Uh, they will be anointed. Uh, they will be power. They will be called by God. Uh, <laughs> You can be seated. <clears throat> I want uh, Job 5, 17 and 18. Job 5, 17 and 18. Blessed is the man. Say blessed. Say, blessed, blessed is the man whom God corrects. Take it, Jackie. So do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. Now listen to verse 18. For he wounds, but he also binds up. He injures, but his hands also heal. Woo, Father, mighty God. And I'm not saying God put that on them. I'm saying that that's the way it was. Now God's healing them. Say, God's healing them right now. Say it with me. Say God's healing. Lift your hands up a minute, guys. Say that with me. Say God Almighty is healing them right now. Say it again. God Almighty is healing them right now. <laughs> Woo! <clears throat> Let's just, let me calm down a little. Uh, Hebrews 12, verse 8, Jackie. Keep it in the NIV, brother. <clears throat> if you are not disciplined. If you are not. Say not. Discipline. And see, that's where we're at right now. People do not discipline their kids. Amen. Jackie told me a few years ago, it was on a Wednesday night that goes up, honey, I don't remember. She said she went to a church on a Wednesday night, went inside, and the kids were running on tops of the seats, running around. And that's what they do in those big churches now. Did you know that? They let the kids just run rampant and wild. God said, if you are not disciplined, Amen. or uh, if God does not discipline you, Everyone, everybody goes under it. Everybody does. Go, Jackie. 
If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Read it again. If Ill you, you're what? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Now I tell you, we have a whole, we have churches and by, just, I don't know how many churches there are, there could be millions of them. There's four, about 450 of them in the city. And I know this for a fact, the minute anybody starts talking any kind of discipline, they get upset. They're going to leave, take their money with them, take off. Because I know if you're not disciplined, then you're not a true son. And the only ones that's coming th forth in the last day are the true sons. <clears throat> Somebody praise him a minute. <clears throat> Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Say that with me. Say, a true son. Yeah. Say it again. Say, a true son. Yeah. You guys open to discipline? You better be because I tell you what. God disciplines and then there's great moves. God disciplines and then there's great moves. God disciplines and there's great moves. God disciplines and then there's great moves. Great moves of revival. Amen? Uh, John 15. John 15. Verse, uh, verse 2. Do verse 1 and 2. I am the true vine. True vine. He's the, he's the true vine. He's, that's true. And my father is the gardener. Is the gardener. He picks out all the weeds. <clears throat> he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be Ooh, even more lift fruitful. Hands up for a minute. How many of you guys feel like you've been through a pruning session? Anybody in the church? Lift your hands up if you feel like you've been through a pruning session. Everybody should lift your hands up and say, Father, I've been through a pruning. I know I've been pruned. I know I have. To get you to produce more fruit. Yes. If your heart's right, you'll make it through it. Amen. <clears throat> if your heart's right, but Pastor Mark, I can't get past my head. <clears throat> I used to do this all the time in the other church. I did this about four times. And this morning, I'm flipping through channels. And I see um, Copeland use what I used in the 80s. And I'm sure he didn't get it from me. <clears throat> Here's what he did. Everybody, in your spirit, don't talk out loud. In your spirit... Count to five. Now say hello. What happened to your head? <laughs> Lift your hands up. What happened to your head? Your head shut off so your mouth could speak. Everybody turn your head off and read this verse. <clears throat> he cuts off every branch of me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You mean the tree, the uh, fig tree, walk past the fig tree, remember that? And he cursed the fig tree where it would not produce fruit. That was Israel. He said, you're not going to, it was a type of Israel. You're not going to produce fruit. I'm going to cut you down. You're not even, I'm going to curse you. You're not going to produce fruit. Thank God he does not do that to the church. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I said somebody say amen. amen. 1 Corinthians 11.32. Would you go there for a minute? 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 11. 11.32. When we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned with the world. Now, I use this scripture. Here's the way you use this scripture. When you're trying to help somebody and they say you're judging me, it's the Lord that judges us. It's God. You're just sharing something out of your mouth. You're just sharing something with someone. Amen? Lift your hands up for a minute. When was the last time you looked at someone right in the face and said, if you don't get saved, you're going to hell. If you don't quit that lying, stealing, and cheating. See, there's a, something happens to you when you get saved. Yes. Doesn't it happen to you? Yes. Well, sure it happens to you. You are not the same person. Never. When was the last time you did that? When was the last time you... Don't you try coming to my house and doing that to my wife, all. <laughs> and I won't let my mother come and do that either. Or if my dad was alive, I wouldn't let him come and do it. She does it to me and I do it to her and that's all you need. Somebody praise him for a minute. <clears throat> I said somebody praise him for a minute. <laughs> Psalm, Psalm 6 and 1. Psalm 6 and 1. Read it. <clears throat> For the director of music with stringed instruments, according to Shemineth, a psalm of David, 
Oh Lord, do not rebuke Please, me. Please, Lord, don't rebuke me in your in anger, your Lord anger. Father, because it's different. Re him rebuking you in his anger is way different than the goodness of the Lord leading to repentance. When God leads you to repentance, he chastises you. When God wants you to get saved, brother, it's a totally different thing. It's totally different, man. But if he does it in his anger towards you, you better get on your face right now and start pleading the blood and asking God, Father, bring a spirit on me, Lord Father God, for repentance, Lord Father God, and touch me from above. Somebody praise him a minute. Amen. Somebody praise him a minute. <clears throat> some, pe some people only know that. Do you know that? Some people only know that because that's the way they were raised. Some people only know anger... When a, parent, when a parent brings anger on a child to get them to do something right, some people only know that. But that don't mean it's right. It's right for God to do it, but I don't think it's right for us to do it. I'm not sure. Woo, Father God. No, don't do it, Lord Father. Don't do it in your wrath. We don't want your wrath. Look at your neighbor say, I don't want your wrath, Father God. Say it a little louder. Say, I don't want your wrath, mighty God. Say, I want your presence, your anointing, your power, your strength. Psalms 118. Psalms 118, 18. Psalms 118, 18. 118, 18. The Lord has. When I found this scripture right here, the first thing I did, I said, Lord, I know you did not chastise my father to death, my earthly father. I know you didn't do that because you don't work that way. The Lord has chastened me severely. But he has not given me over to death. Lift your hands up for a minute. God does not work that way. Get that out of your head. Go like this. Get it out of my head. Stand to your feet and say, get that out of my head right now. God will not chastise me all the way to death. He does not work that way. Woo, mighty God. He never works that way. Psalms 119 verse 67. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. Read again. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. Read it to him one more time. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. Before I was sick in the head, before I was messed up, I went astray, but now. Lift your hands up and say, but now, now. I obey your word. Guys, we're getting ready to go into a warfare spirit we've never experienced before. God's calling them from the north, the east, the south, and the west. There's going to be people come in here that have the power to pray, the anointing to pray, and we're going to begin to pull down strongholds, bind spirits in high places, and people are going to be delivered and set free. Not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of the living God. <laughs> come on, somebody praise him a minute. Somebody praise him a minute. Somebody praise him a minute. Somebody lift your hands and just love on him a second. Just love on him a minute. Love on him just for a second. <laughs> love on him for a minute. Say, Father, give, me, give us eyes to see what the Spirit's doing. Ears to hear. See, you can't hear what's going on without a minister or without the Word of God. And once you catch what's going on, Woo, mighty God. Well, the minister should know it first, right? Yes. Absolutely, he's the leader. He should know it first. And then he preaches it. The rest of the people grab hold of it. And it begins to burn inside you. And it becomes life inside you. Not death, but life. And then you walk around under the power of the Holy Ghost. Right. <coughs> Somebody say amen. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Woo, mighty God. <coughs> Woo, you're good, Lord. My, my, my. Father God, you are so good, Lord Father God. Every minister, every minister, I was talking to a person years ago about a huge church, huge, in town here. And it, uh, that spirit of Jezebel took it all the way down. I mean, just destroyed it. But let me tell you what happened in the middle of this thing. <coughs> he's up ministering this minister's up ministering and he didn't realize the anointing had left him I don't think <coughs> but he's up there ministering and then one of the ladies just stood up in the back seat and says that's my man 
Another lady on that side stood up and said, no, it's my man. Another one on the front stood up, you're crazy, it's my man. Fifty women stood up and said that. About two months later, the wife died. The your hands up. That's right. And that's the ones God's going to restore back into the kingdom. Say, restore back into the kingdom. Say, restore back into the kingdom. Say it again, restore back into the kingdom. I tell you, those men and women that have been taken down by the Spirit can be used by God. God say, no, his, his, uh, his uh, devices. Yes. Yes. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. Somebody praise him a minute, man. <laughs> you know what the Bible says? The Bible says this. And it's very plain, very simple. It says, you shouldn't attack uh, uh, Papa, if he falls, you should lift him up in the spirit of meekness. That's right. Isn't that right? That's right? Lift him up in the spirit of meekness. Because it might happen to you. It might happen to somebody you know. It could happen to anybody. Satan's very slick. <laughs> somebody say amen. amen. Let me go ahead and finish the rest of this. You guys, you can believe this or not. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. <coughs> Mo usually women are more um, sensitive in the spirit than men are. That's the reason men usually don't accept what's going on too much because they're not receptive to it. But there are men that are. They can feel it. They, they, they're sensitive to the Spirit of the Lord. What happens in the churches is the anointing gets so strong that the people that are in there, you believe this or not, cannot tell the difference between Jezebel and the Holy Spirit. It's that seductive. Not, not that the Holy Spirit is seductive, but that's the way that Spirit operates. So all of a sudden, nobody is sensing what's going on because everybody's up here paying attention to what's happening up here. And when you start going into the heavens, you better have the scripture to defend yourself with because you just can't go, the Lord rebukes you. Because once that thing gets in a foothold in a church, 50 women will stand up and say, that's my man. That's my man. Or that's my woman. Or how, what, however it works. Somebody praise him for a minute. Yes, I'm trying to teach you something. <laughs> I said, I'm trying to teach you something. Lift your hands up for a minute. And then we're praying for revival. And we're saying, Lord, bring your Holy Spirit down into the church so people can be delivered and set free. Well, brother, you better have some watchmen. You better have some people that are on the walls right. watching everything. Because if they're not there watching, the ones that are having the fun aren't going to have the fun much longer. So what the watchmen do, they stay like Thursday. What the watchmen do, they stand on the towers in prayer. And they're not recognized too much. They just, you don't recognize them too much. You don't even really know what they're doing. I'd say you can separate the real watchmen for the, from not so real watchmen. If there's watchmen in the church, it's not going to happen. If there's real watchmen in the house, it can happen. Especially if it's a spiritual church. Lift your hands up for a minute. Say, not by might nor by power, by God's, by, by God's Spirit, that thing is destroyed. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> so then now, what, what do you see in the nation? Jezebel's spirit is everywhere. It's everywhere. You see, men, women want to be, uh, be like men. Not in a sense what they want to flip off, but they want to be men in the sense that they want to control everything. The other day I walked into a party store. I haven't shared this with you. I want to share it one time openly. I went into a party store. I was headed into a party store. I like these drinks. They're called uh, Uptown. Uptime. So I'm walking to the door. There's this lady walking behind me. Kid. 18, 19 years old. I went to open the door and she went, no thank you. Right. And I looked at her and I said, I'm not doing it because you're a girl. I'm doing it because I'm a gentleman. <laughs> so I just walked right in and slammed the door on her. <laughs> Somebody lift your hands up. That's where we have went. We have went so far off the board. There's nothing wrong with a man opening a door for a woman if they want to. Isn't that right? I open the door for my wife all the time. I let, when we get home, when we go into our garage, I open the door and I let her walk right in first. You think I'm going to do that? Jackie and I are on a bus, bus one day. We start to get out of the bus. I let her go first. This guy jumped in front of his girl and then he seen what I did and he backed up behind her and let her go first. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Well, women don't like that anymore because you're going at their womanhood. I don't want to be a woman like that. Well, I don't know about you, brother, but who wants a woman that's a half man? <laughs> Somebody praise him a minute. 
I said, somebody praise him a minute. I said, somebody praise him a minute. I said, somebody praise him a minute. <clears throat> I say this about her all the time. Jackie's very delicate. You, you, can, you can touch her, uh, you barely touch her and she'll bruise. She's just so delicate. You know, then they, the men use that scripture in the Bible. Well, treat your women like they're the weaker vessel. It says, treat a woman like they're the weaker vessel. It says they're not the weaker vessel. Treat them like they are the weaker vessel. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> yeah. Say, hey, this is pretty good. Yeah. Matthew 21. Verse, uh, where am I at here? I want verse um, 32. Yeah, 30, 21, 32. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did, and even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. So here we are now. There's two classes of people here. It says there's the prostitutes and the tax collectors. And now it's flipped. They don't believe in the power of God. And you got all the other people believing in the power of God. And God said, I need a church that is not willing to just jump up and repent. I need a church that's ready to repent from the heart, not the head. Somebody say amen. amen. So Father God, we need watchmen. We need people that are fast to repent. No matter what it is. It can be something. I don't care what it is. Simple. Lift your hands up for a minute. Don't you let no demon get in between you and your spouse. Don't you let no demon get in between you and your family. Don't you let no demon get in between you and your kids. Cast them things out of your house. Don't put up with them. <clears throat> Brother, it is true. When I was coming up, I had a niece that would set her little kids down there and let them watch. Friday the 13th. All that garbage. Just send them there and let them watch it. Little kids. You know what that does? I, you know, some people go, it don't hurt nothing. You know what it does? It dulls your, your it dulls you. It dulls you. And what it does, when it dulls you, you don't have any senses anymore. Then you begin to not feel for people. Lift your hands up for a minute. Say that with me. Say, then I don't feel for people. What is it if, something, if somebody gets their head cut off or get their legs cut off? Big deal. Who cares? You find you going down the street, guys laying out in the middle of the road, 10 cars, cars go past him before one stops to help him. <laughs> We've slipped so far. But the church, see the Bible says that the church is supposed to penetrate the darkness by showing what we are. Right. Lift your hands up. Say, by showing what we are. The body of Christ. We're not above chastisement. I'm not above it. Jackie's not above it. And you shouldn't be above, no matter how, what age you are. Amen. <laughs> Woo. Do you hear that prophecy she gave this morning? Diane. Did you hear that prophecy? Now, there was, this was two type, totally different prophecies. She broke down in a worship type prophecy and all of a sudden all of a sudden people picked it up and started doing the same thing oh diane came forth in a powerful type prophecy penetrating darkness and then yours was to bring us into a, with a repentant heart of worship lift your hands up for a minute Amen. say that with me say you see what prophecy does it gives direction purpose and life Somebody say amen. amen. I said somebody say amen. amen. Luke 24, 46 through 48. <coughs> he told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. I want everybody to read 47 to me. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning Lord, at Jerusalem. Lord woke me up last week, week. Here's what he said to me. There's two things missing in the church, Mark. What is it? Repentance. <coughs> repentance. And forgiveness of sins. There's two things missing in the church. You don't hear them anymore? No, you don't. Nobody talks about it. 
It's a flood. I'm telling you, there's fall coming to the church that you're not going to believe. <coughs> because what the ministers are ministering is all about. Money. One lady came here from another church. She took a guy and married him. Left here and married him. She came here. She, she sat here in the service. She, she's going, <coughs> listen to the minister, ministry. She comes up to me after service. She said, you mean it's not all about money? She's 20-some years old. So when a kid asked me that question, I said, no, 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 it isn't. It's about this. Repentance and forgiveness will be preached. Preached. Not taught. Not taught. Preached. Those men in those revivals were so powerful, the whole place would fall out by preaching. Those men would stand in doorways of factories and the men would pass out under the power of God. Well, the whole thing's changed now. We've focused on some... Let's stand up. Stand up for a minute. The whole thing has changed now. Well, brother, it's coming back. It's coming back, I'm telling you. It is coming back. It's coming back to the churches. We're all Holy Ghost men and women. Stand up and say, repent and be baptized in the name of the living God. You cannot live the way you live. Get before God and ask God to forgive you or you're going to go to hell. That's it. And repent, forgiveness of sins. Say that with me. Say forgiveness, forgiveness. of sins. In whose name? Jesus. In whose name? Jesus. In whose name? Jesus. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I might as well just flick, just throw it all out here today. <coughs> you want to hear it? I'm going to tell you what something that bothers me every time I turn te television on. I like cowboys. Old cowboys. There's such character in them. You can actually watch them and not have to have earplugs. <coughs> I'll tell you something that irritates the fire me. It might not bother you. And it might not mean anything. But ministers, and I understand why they do it. Don't get me wrong. They put their name And then it's Jesus, or it's this, or it's that. So it'd be like me ripping down First Church of Worship and Braze and putting down Markham Daryl Terry's church. Give your hands up for a minute. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, it's not my church. It's not mine. It's God's. Say it's God's. It's God's. Slap your neighbor and say, wake up, it's God's. God's. Say, if you're going anywhere, you've got to understand this. You got to be humble and not that false humility. Amen. You got to be humble before God and then he'll move on your behalf. Amen. May say amen. amen. <clears throat> Next verse, 48. <clears throat> you are witnesses of these things. People witness of what? People repenting? Yes. People being forgiven for their sins? That's your, what you should be a witness of. Well, we're not seeing that. I'm not a witness to it. I don't see it happen that much. Matthew 3, 8. I hope that's 3, 8. It looks like 3, 8. It could be 3, 8. Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Hey, that's the NIV. Would you put that in the um, New American Standard? Therefore, bring fruit in keeping with repentance. Nine. And do not suppose that you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham for our father. For I say to you that God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Go back to, back to eight for a minute. <laughs> now I'm going to give you a little story right here. I'm gonna, we're going to close here and do communion. It's quarter after one. All my whole, got a witness. Raise your hand up and say, I'm a witness to what you're getting ready to say. Well, sure you are. You're, I'm not going to say it to lie. Lift your hand up. <laughs> All the whole ministry, probably most of the ministry up to, what year is it? 2017. Uh, years, 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 long years. Uh, many of years. I, I bared fruit 
Galatians, bear fruit underneath my mother. Lift your hands up for a minute. I bear fruit underneath my mother. Now go to verse 9. And do not suppose that you can say the to yourself. The exact same thing that they were trying to do. But it was with Abraham our father. We're going to bear fruits under him. And God's saying, no you're not. You're going to bear your own fruit. You can't stand under someone. You've got to be disconnected from those that always had to rule over you. You've got to disconnect yourself so you can bear forth, forth fruit in this time. Galatians 5. Yes. Go and read it. Galatians 5. When you're bearing fruit under someone else, or you're thinking you are, because they're praying for you, they're ministering, they're praying for you, so you kind of hide behind that. Get your hands up. That's why a lot of men are called mama's boys. Amen. Well, that's exactly what was happening here. They said, we want to bear fruit under Abraham. We want to bear his fruit. Do what he does. What he did. Don't work that way. Every one of us have a call on our life. It could be with a sword. Could be with a shield. Could be with a word of faith. It could be with a word of power. But every one of us have a word. And it's not going to come from our parents. It's coming from the Spirit of God. Amen. You just catch what I said. You need to write it down. Because <clears throat> it's true. Works with women too. Somebody say amen. Two more scriptures. Revelation 3.3. 3. Go quickly. Revelation 3.3. 3. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard, and keep it and repent. Keep it. Keep what I've received. Keep what I've heard. If you ever went through Scripture, you read Scripture and you read it, you read this page here, and then you go back two years later and you read it, and all of a sudden something jumps out at you, and you go, that is part of my makeup and character. I need to ask God for forgiveness for it. Go. Remember therefore what you have received and heard and keep it and repent. If therefore you will not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour I will come upon you. Uh, Revelations 2 5. Two, last one. Revelations 2 5. Remember therefore from where you have fallen and repent and do the deed. The trans up for a minute. People call me all the time and they ask, that, how can I get or do this or do that the way I used to do it? Everybody in the room, listen very closely. Remember, therefore, from whence you have fallen and repent and do the deeds you did at first. You got your hand up? Yes. Everybody in this church, when you got saved, baptized with the Holy Ghost, everybody was on fire with the power of God. Yes. You wanted everybody to get saved. You didn't want everybody to get rich. You wanted everybody to get saved and feel what you were going through and be delivered from it. Somebody say amen. amen. But now our minds have changed and we've gotten all this garbage teaching. And God's saying, I'm bringing the church back to its first love. Yes. Got your hands up? Back to the church's first love, which is Jesus Christ. Getting people baptized in the Holy Spirit. Getting people set free. God's first love. Say God's first love. God. Or else I come unto you and I will remove your lampstand out of its place unless you repent. Amen. Romans 2 5. <clears throat> Woo, Father God. Now we're talking about, you know, we're, what we're crying out for Thursday is watchmen. And I think that's where we have felt God the most. <clears throat> Go. But because of your stubbornness and unrepentant Lift your hand, heart. Have you ever run across him that's stubborn? Anybody in the church? Yes. Stubborn? Yes. Ugly? Yes. And every word they say to you is wrong yes. and it gets your defenses up. Yes. Anybody in the room? Yes. Not now. Huh? Yeah. <clears throat> Stubbornness, unrepentant, an unrepentant heart. Go, Jake. You are storing up wrath for yourself in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Boy, I tell you, because of your stubbornness. Father, we do not want to be stubborn. Amen. Say that with me. Say, Father. Remember, you guys, we're leading the church into repentance. We're going to get everything we have done. You can go years and years and years yes. and think you're doing it right. And it's not right. That's right. 
But God let it go because of his goodness and his love for you. God just let it go and let you do it the way you were doing it. Isn't that right? Sure he can. And you think you're doing it all right. And then all of a sudden things start to happen. You go, wow, I should have did this, this, that, and this. And then we could have went down this direction. And because of our stubbornness, we don't see it. You don't see it. And everybody can be stubborn. Amen. Everybody can be stubborn. Amen. Amen. So, Father, you're calling us to repentance. To repentance. And that's where we're headed. We're headed to people to watch. Say watch. watch. <coughs> Say watch. watch. Everybody's praying for the, what's What we're praying for is a revival. We pray for a revival for ourselves. Well, the minute you start praying like that, guys, the enemy's making plans. Making plans. Close your eyes, bow your head. <coughs> the enemy's making plans. <coughs> plans, 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 plans. He's been around a long time. He's seen revivals come and he's seen them go. <coughs> he's seen the move of the Spirit of, the mo of God move and then he's seen the Spirit of God stopped. He saw it. He knows how to do it. He knows how to manipulate. That's why it's so important when you have a group of people. Five people is all you need as long as they're in the same mind. There's no discord among them. Because the minute there's discord, it opens the door for the enemy. Amen? Amen. Say that with me. Say, when the minute there's discord, it makes door a door for the enemy. When you see discord in a family, if you've got a family, you see discord in it, quit being a coward. Stand up and rebuke that thing and get rid of it. Amen. <clears throat> so, Father God, you're calling us, and I, I feel it. We got our heads down right now, eyes closed. <clears throat> and everybody's listening. I, I, I heard the people, especially that part where we got to that repentant thing. And just ask, ask the Lord to touch you. It doesn't matter where it's at. As you're asking God to touch you right now, could be in your whatever, where you feel you're lacking, it didn't matter. God can strengthen where you feel you're lacking. <clears throat> God can strengthen you. It doesn't matter how old you are. Remember, he don't chastise to death. He chastises to peace. <clears throat> Just ask the Lord to touch you right now. <clears throat> Father, I know, I'm going to do it out loud. <clears throat> Father, I know that my wife and I should have been, and I see it now. You're floating high, you don't see things. You're not looking for things, you're too high. You're floating already. <clears throat> but we should have watched more. Not that we weren't praying, we were. But there's a place in prayer where you're watching and not just praying. <clears throat> you're watching, you got your eyes open, spiritual eyes. Your spiritual eyes are open, you're watching everything that's going on. If you got a, 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 a kid that's in ministry, you know, a daughter that's in ministry, pray that their eyes and their ears are open and pray they become a watchman and they watch every little thing that takes place. Yes. Not that they, don't, they, they try to change or manipulate it, but they see it happening. So Father God, I, I and most of the church now is getting lazy. You can't even hardly get up and get out and go to church. Either it's, I don't know what's going on with that. Oh, Father, we give you praise. And Lord, Father, as we take his communion right now in Jesus' mighty name, Father God, let that penetrate our hearts, which it always does. But it's getting ready to happen. I can feel it. God, I can feel it. Because when the enemy is on the attack, God is on the move. I said, when the enemy's on the attack, God is on the move. <clears throat> God is on the move. God is on the move. God is on the move. Keep your heads down, every eye closed. Is there somebody in this room right now that want to say, Pastor Mark, I want you to lay your hands on me. I've, re I've I asked God to move on me. I, I repented. I just want you to lay your hands on me. And, and that, so it gives me strength. So I can get through this and be a vital part of the ministry. I want you to raise your hand. <coughs> One, two, three, four. <coughs> four people. 
Okay, you four, come on up. I just, come right down there in the center aisle. I want to lay my hands on you. <clears throat> I tell you, sometimes you can get, and this is true, it's true at any ministry, you can get to the point in ministry where you're not seeing the needs of the people, you're only seeing what God has called you to do. You're not seeing the needs of the people. You're not seeing the heart of the people. And it's very easy to do that. You should be so awake, you should be able to know what the pastors are doing. Amen. What the song people are doing. You should be that awake when you're watching for God. Yes. And when you do that, it can get powerful. Somebody say amen, it can get powerful. Amen. Okay, yeah. slip your hands up, brother. See, I don't have no idea. As your eyes are closed. I have no idea what you go through. Unless the Spirit of the Lord tells me. He's told me a lot. But I'm sure there's things that you're going through. I have no idea what it is. I'm not going through them. I can feel things. I can feel the body going through stuff. But not to the point where I'm going to fall out. My knee, legs are bothering me. <clears throat> not to that point. So I have no idea what you're going through. And, and most of the time a minister can't even relate to it. Because most of the time, ministers, when they get called, and they're, real, they're truly a minister for God, and they get called at a young age, they go through stuff, but they're guarded. Job was guarded. He had a hedge all the way around him. And the enemy, for years, years and years, he could not get through that hedge until Satan came and he lifted it. He said, okay, I'll lift it, but you can't take his life. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, whatever he is... He is in his heart right now. I believe he has a heart of repentance, Lord, Father God. I, need, I, I believe he has a heart of, for you, Lord. And I ask you to touch him right now in Jesus' name, Lord, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, Father. A heart after you, Lord God. A heart after you. And you need to practice what we did today. Count to ten to yourself. And then say hello to me. You can't do it. It's impossible. So it's not your, you can defeat your head. You can defeat your head. You're never going to defeat your family. You just got to let them go and let God. You just got to let them go. Let God in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Same with you. See, I have no idea what, you've, what you're going through, what you've went through, unless the Holy Spirit opens it up to me. I have the perfect minute to call names out, streets, whatever. But in Jesus' name, Father God, whatever she's going through, we're there to help her. And Lord, Father, laying hands on her so she can be strong in the Lord and the power of his might so she can get through this battle. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> peace, peace, Thank peace. peace. Oh, hi. That was good word. Thank you. Honey. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, Father God, we lay hands upon Anne, Lord, Father God, to help get her through the rough time. No matter what it is. We lay hands on her in the name of Jesus, Lord Father God. Come forth in the power of God. And I pray for her son, Lord Father, for protection. Plead the blood over him, his family, his wife. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Next, you're welcome, hon. Father God, in Jesus' name. <clears throat> we just pray over Brother Paul, Lord Father. I have no idea what he's went through in his life. Really don't know too much about what he's going through. This, again, like if you reveal it to me. We just lay hands on him, Lord Father, so he has the strength to make it through. So he has the strength to make it through, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You guys, when the Spirit of the Lord moves heavy at the beginning of service, unless you've ministered the Word, it is, it's almost impossible to stand up and minister the Word. It's hard. It's hard to go two different directions, what I'm trying to say. Thursday night, when the Spirit moves so heavy, I'm watching the people. I'm up there trying to preach, and everybody's like this. <laughs> I, 
I couldn't get an amen if I had to. Every, everybody's like, I'm reading their minds. What are you yelling about? <laughs> it is, brother. You, you'll, you'll, you'll taste it, I'm sure. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, Father God, no matter what the doors are, no matter what the problems are, you're there. You're there to protect us, to guide us, Lord, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we lay hands upon her to give her strength to protect her because laying on the hands is powerful. It's powerful, Father God, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen. Did you do that count thing to yourself? Do it again. Count to ten. Now say, hello, Mark. When you get that battle in your mind, all you got to do is open your mouth. <coughs> Isn't that right? Yeah. I used to use that. I was in shock when I seen him use that this morning. <coughs> Woo! Communion time. Who did? <coughs> that was in the 80s? That's when I used it all the time in the 80s. Can you, 80s, say 80s. 80s. That's a long time ago. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 80s is a long time ago. <sighs> oh man, I'm soaked. Look at this. I'm soaked. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you may come up now and receive communion. <coughs> Where's that Richard at? <coughs> Man with this car. <coughs> he got hit? In total? Did he have insurance? <coughs> oh, God. <coughs> Did he have a payment? <coughs> oh, Lord. Father God, this morning as we come together as one body in unity and one accord, Father, as we take up this bread and drink of this cup, Father, we ask that you would search our hearts. Father God, if there's anything in us that is not of you, Lord, we ask that you would remove it. Father God, we ask anything, Father God, that would stop us from being closer to you, Lord, we ask that you would remove it. Father, we ask forgiveness. If there's anything in our hearts that we have against another, we ask forgiveness, Father God. Lord, we want to walk closer with you, Father God. And we don't want anything to hinder us. So, Father God, we ask that you would open our eyes and ears, Lord, Father God, to be a watchman, Lord, Father God, to hold each other up, oh God, to hold this ministry up, Father God, and let it not just be us and this, Father God, but let us hold up this nation, Father God. 
Let us be a watchman all over, Father God. Let yeah. us not get distracted, Father God, by the things of this world, but let us keep our focus on you, Father God. Mm -hmm. And Lord, Father God, just search us, oh God. Start a fire down in us, Lord, that will burn up everything in us, Lord, yeah. that's not of you. And Father God, yeah. we ask today, Father God, that you, that you would take control of our lives, Father God, that we will change, Father God, that we will not be the same, Father God. Let that, that, that be a change in us, Father God. That when we take this bread and this body, Lord, knowing what your son did for us, Lord, that he died for us and he rose again. And as he rose again, Lord, let us rise up. Let us rise up with a new life, Father God. Just like when we were baptized, Father God. As we went in, the old us and rose up new. Lord, let us rise up new today, Father God. Let that message get down inside of us, Father God. And let it change our hearts, Lord. Take out those stony hearts, oh God. And give us hearts of flesh. Hearts of compassion. Let us take our eyes off ourselves, oh God. And look at those around us, Father God. Let us be imitators of Christ, Father God. When we think to do something, let us stop and say, what would Jesus do? Father, let us be imitators of your son. And Father God, we thank you today. We thank you that because of the love that you had for us, Lord, that you sent your son to die for us, God. And we thank you for it. And we won't take it lightly, Father God. And we thank you today as we take up the body that was broken for us, oh God. And we drink of this blood that was shed for us, this blood that washes us, that makes us righteous and holy before you, Father God. And let us be those vessels, Father, that you can use, Lord, Father God, that you can send out to the lost, Father God. Let us be vessels, Father God, that you can use, Father. And we thank you as we drink of the blood now. In Jesus' name, amen.